And each one of them paying. So every month you have this income that's constant. That's what we need to do. Revive the whole concept of awqaf. People should be giving their money their, when they get near their death, thinking about awqaf, giving um, money to Allah and His Messenger, to this deen. Because that's what's going to save us in the next world. There's, uh, just read the Qur'an and you'll re realize very quickly that infaq, giving out, is one of the essential natures of Islam. They say, al-mahabbatu bidun infaq nifaq. Love without giving out is hypocrisy. If you're not giving out, then you don't love this deen. If you're not giving out of your energy, of your money, of your time, yourself, your wealth, all these things, then it's hypocrisy. That's the bottom line. Uh, brother, you mentioned that uh, we in North America, uh, in your opening address, are suffering from serious maladies. We have serious drawbacks. We're suffering from economic evils. And at the same time, you made reference to the Arabian Peninsula, saying that uh, in your own words, people stuff in their faces. Um, there are also uh, other corruption up there. Uh, my question is, is that the Muslim in North America, whether Canada or the United States, they are pulling together in order to override certain uh, economic evil, in order to overpower it through uh, the spread of Islam. Uh, we look forward to places like Mecca. You know, that you said that uh, McDonald's now is opening business up there. There are all sorts of other things going on up there. That is the heart of Islam. What is the Muslim ulama or the hierarchy in that region doing in order to, to, to eliminate, uh, let's say, uh, economic evils or obstacles towards Islam so that uh, it reflects the teachings of Rasulullah? Um. I think from my, the general, you know, the Arab, they say, <laughs> that if you have intellect, you just need like uh, innuendos. You don't need somebody to just spell everything out for you. So I <laughs> I'm, hope you understand that. <laughs> the, uh, the Muslim world, and there's good Muslims everywhere. There's certainly incredible Muslims in the Hijaz. Some of the best Muslims that I've met actually uh, have been from the Hijaz, in fact. And that's not an exaggeration. Um, but there's a lot of problems there. I don't generally like to mention countries because uh, I think uh, all of our countries, unfortunately, are in deplorable situations. Um, certainly that area is an easy target, right? If you want to set your marks, the bullseye is very big. And... Um, as for what the ulama are doing there, um, a lot of them are very busy with argumentation right now. So, and preoccupied with things like whether Allah has a hand or not or something, I don't know. So, uh, it's an unfortunate situation. And, um, but our Prophet ﷺ told us that um, towards the end of time, he said, in uh, imana Iman goes back to the Hijaz like a snake goes back to its hole. And uh, Allah has blessed those people with the two, the Haramain and Sharifain. And I would say this that um, there's, there's a lot of uh, troubles in that region and there's troubles in store if you look at the um, foreign affairs journal of fall of 1993 no 92 92 um, Atkins who was a ambassador of, the, of uh, Saudi Arabia wrote an article in there and said basically that um, our strategic interests lie in that region and what we should do is deplete it completely of its oil reserves within the next 20 years. So that's part of the foreign policy of the United States is to um, take all, in fact that's why they're artificially keeping the oil prices so low so that they can just 
uh, get as much oil as they can because they store oil in the United States. There's huge oil reserves actually stored in the United States in case of a national emergency where sea lanes are cut off and things like that and oil can't get into the country. So that's part of their long-term strategy. Um, I personally am not of the um, revolutionary school of thought. I think that um, I agree with Sultan Abdul Hamid that revolutionaries by their nature uh, destroy much more than they ever build up. I, I think that um, it's dangerous to uh, instill in the Muslims the idea of uh, coup d'etats and these type of uh, methodologies for changing things because I believe that the Quranic methodology for change is summed up in the ayah in Allah la ma bi ma bi anfusihim that Allah does not change a people until they change what's in themselves. As far as certain countries go, there's indications that what's needed is the people literally to just get up and as a intifada, right, and just say enough's enough. I mean, there are countries that warrant that. Um, so I, I really don't uh, have much of an answer for that. You know, it's, it's a deep question. I don't think I'm um, capable of really going into detail about that because I, I also believe in the, that our, our takalif are different. Our responsibilities are different. In Amr bin Ma'roof in Nahya'an al Munkar, which is the foundational or fundamental, or I don't, I'm trying to avoid that word, fundamental, because, right? But the, the basic principle of Islam is Amr bin Ma'roof and Nahi an Munkar after Iman in Allah. And that's what gives the Muslims their uh, moral superiority over other peoples. And it's based on three conditions. And the first condition is that, that you, you recognize that it's a Munkar. And you know what the Ma'roof is. In other words, you recognize the disease for what it is and you know what the cure is. So for instance, one of the amazing things in this deen is that there are different ways of reciting the Qur'an. And there's a famous story of Omar heard uh, Ubay ibn Ka'ab reciting the Qur'an and he told him it was wrong. And he said, well, that's the way the Prophet ﷺ taught me. And so they went to the Prophet and the Prophet said, they're both right. So like in the in, um, Qur'an, because I learned with Riwayat Warsh, and I've many times, I've, if I've led the prayer, there have been people that don't know Riwayat Warsh. And so uh, I would say something like, um, uh, I can't think of a good, uh, oh, وَمَنْ نُعَمِّرْهُ نَنْكُسُ فِي الْخَلْقِ In the Riwayat Warsh they say, وَمَنْ نُعَمِّرْهُ نَنْكُسُ فِي الْخَلْقِ And in Hafsit نُنَكِّسُهُ فِي الْخَلْقِ So there are different uh, recitations. So if somebody doesn't know it, he'll say, نُنَكِّسُهُ فِي الْخَلْقِ And they think they're correcting you and they're not. They're just giving you a different variant of reading. And that's why knowledge is so fundamental. You have to know what a munkar is before you can correct it because it might not be a munkar. It might in fact be perfectly correct. And, and the second condition is that... Uh, and there's difference of opinion about this, but most of them say that you um, will not bring harm upon yourself. In other words, that uh, you won't put yourself in actual physical bodily danger. And some of them say because of the ayah when uh, Luqman tells his son to uh, uh, you know, that you should uh, join right action and forbid evil and be patient about what it, you're afflicted with. They use that as a proof that you still have to give Amr bin Ma'ruf. And we know the hadith that the highest jihad is speaking the truth in front of a tyrant, which often means death. So, um, and then the, the last uh, prerequisite is um, that your calling in joining the right and forbidding the wrong does not lead to a fitna or a munkar greater than that thing that you are actually speaking out against. So in many of our countries, in the Muslim countries, to, to have radical change in the way a lot of Muslims want it leads to fitnas greater than the actual fitna that they're in and so people suffer and from that perspective um, I think that uh, we, we have to be very careful and we've seen in instances with the assassination of Sadat what came after was actually ended up being worse um, right? 
than, than what they were in. Because I don't think that solves the problems to chop the head off. It doesn't, it's just not a solution. The solution is that the ulama have to start speaking the truth and um, people have to listen to them and that the rulers need also to um, recognize that they have responsibilities. Again, it goes back to the khitab al-Qur'ani. You know, the way that the Qur'an is addressing people. It speaks to the rulers and warns them. And we're in a time, again, as uh, the brother said, you know, this is a time when there's deep darkness in this age and there's a global network uh, taking place. But I believe in la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. That no matter how powerful they appear, they're not mu'jizin Allah fil ard. They're, they're not uh, incapacitating Allah in His earth. Allah is qahirun fawqa ibadihi. He's over all of them conquering and overpowering, you see. But we have to be people of Allah, and by being people of Allah, we become people of Nasr. So, aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah. Jazakum Allah khairan li hasni istima'ikum. Thank you for uh, being patient and listening. And uh, forgive me, inshallah, if I said anything uh, that anybody took offense with. It wasn't my intention. And uh, our nature is naqs. It's deficiency. So, um, inshallah, you overlook my shortcomings and I'll try to overlook your shortcomings and look at the best of each other as brothers and sisters. Inshallah, make us people that look at the best of the Muslims and lower our eyes to the faults and the shortcomings of the Muslims and make dua that Allah um, raises the Muslims up, inshallah, and makes us people of the izza of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the izza of Islam and inshallah unites the hearts and makes us people of mahabba, of ikhlas, of sincerity, of tawbah, of people of tawbah that turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of people of istiqamah, of uprightness, that Allah gives us uprightness in our gatherings and amongst our family, that Allah protects our children in these countries and that He raises them up as true Muslims and barreen, like people of, of piety, filial piety towards their parents and, and inshallah put in the hearts of their parents a love for Islam and a desire to transmit that Islam to their children and not see is, uh, Islam as a threat from their children but see Islam as the salvation for their children and to guide them and guide their children to the best paths and inshallah Allah give this community bounty and blessings and inshallah uh, help you complete this um, worthy and noble project here and inshallah make this community a beacon for other communities inshallah a beacon of light and istiqam and mahabba and dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'll just finish it by saying that uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Ma amira ibn Adam amran anja min alabidda min dhikrillah." That the son of Adam was not done anything that will protect him more from the punishment of Allah than the remembrance of Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ, um, when the man told him, "Qad kathara taqdiya shara'u al-Islam fadulni arshain atashabathu bihi." That the rules of Islam have become too much for me. So indicate to me, guide me to something that if I hold on to it, I'll be saved by it. And he said, dunya May you leave the world and your tongue is moist with the dhikr of Allah. So inshallah be dhakirin Allah dhikran kathiran wa dhakirat. وأقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المسلمين ورحمة الله رب العالمين